Do you want to relax? Are you having trouble sleeping or focusing? CBD reduces anxiety, chronic pain, seizures, PTSD, depression. Try our CBD gummies or chocolates. You will be very satisfied. Visit cbdcollections.net 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 Hello everyone. Welcome to another conversation with um, me. We like to interview uh, Jamaicans that are doing positive things. And we have heard Diana before, so if you haven't heard the, uh, the first interview, we encourage you to go listen to the first interview and then come back to this one. Okay, Diana McIntyre Pike has been serving the Jamaican community for many years. She has provided outstanding service to the development and training of communities in entrepreneurship and basic hospitality skills and created Villages as a Business Program, which is being implemented in Jamaica and other parts of the Caribbean. My co-host, Chris Daly, will be doing the interview, so take it away, Chris. Thanks, Denise. And Diana, welcome back for another enriching conversation. How are you today? I am very well. I'm just um, planning with the... Um, Lockdown we're having in Jamaica until Wednesday, so oh, there's geez. a lot of things happening. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But you apart from in... that, I'm healthy and well. Oh, wonderful. I'm glad we have somebody like you, as folks will find out shortly, who can navigate even challenges like COVID. But for those of you who, may, you know, who have new members joining our, our community all the time, may not have heard you before, so we'd just like to introduce you a little. So tell us a little yes. about your Jamaican roots. Well, my Jamaican roots, um, I grew up in the parish of Westmoreland. Um, my mother and father were the pioneers of Negril. Um, and we also had a guest house in Savamar, which is about half an hour away from Negril. So I grew up in the guest house business. And I also lived partially on the Plume Estate, which my father was for over 40 years. Um, the cane farmer's manager of the Frome Sugar Estate, West Indies Sugar Estate. Um, so my roots is the western side of the island. And in the guest house, it was our home as well. So we had uh, guests who stayed there and they were like family. And we involved them in our family life. You know, if we went to the supermarket or went to the church, we didn't have to create attractions because we were the attraction, our lifestyle was the attraction. So that's how I got involved in tourism in a different way. So my mindset was seen from my early age. Right, so yeah, you, you grew up right within the industry because of your, your family roots. That's wonderful. Yes. 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 So what, what motivated you sometimes when folks grow up in you know a certain industry they may move away or their parents may want them to become a doctor or Indian chief but you stayed in the business what motivated well, you to the, stay in the business well it's a very good question you know because to be honest with you my passion was for dramatic arts oh. um I, I i came second in the island in art as well but dramatic arts, acting, I was in the national pantomime, preparing myself for that career um, because I enjoy that. And I was accepted at the Rose Ruford College of Speech and Drama in the UK. But um, hold on a second, please. At the time, when I wanted to go, my eldest brother said to me, he asked me one question. He said, <clears throat> he said, are, are you planning to come back to Jamaica? It's my response, yes. He said, well, if you're planning to come back to Jamaica, there's no future for that in Jamaica. 
So I would suggest that you do hotel management. Mm. So I said to him, well, just a minute. <clears throat> I said, well, I would like you to know that women don't do that, which is true. No, women weren't studying professionally hotel management, only men at the time. Mm. And that was way back in 19, I'm trying to remember now, 1970, around, no, it was before that, it was 68, 68, 69. Okay. Uh, and and I, I said, okay, so we applied and I got through to go to the UK um, for that in Cambridge. The Cambridgeshire College um, accepted me to uh -huh. do hotel management and catering. So I specialized in catering. So I was there for two years and I returned home. And my mother and father had moved from Westmoreland because they were invited to uh, Mandeville, where I am now, um, the center of the country, 2,000 feet above sea level, to open a hotel for the bauxite industry uh, staff from, UK, from the United States who wanted something more homely. And then you were good at that. So we got the hotel there, the Astro Hotel, which became the Astro Country and eventually. Okay. Um, and I was there for about a year with my parents. And then I went off to study. And when mm -hmm. I returned home, I only had in mind to return to the family hotel. And my dear mother decided that I should not just be there, I should go to the north coast of Jamaica. Okay. Uh, and so um, she went and told them I'm available and I was accepted um, at the Holiday Inn as a guest relations director. And most interesting, I can tell you about that. That was an interesting experience because when I went there, everything was the United States. Nothing was Jamaican. And uh, wow. I had a problem with that as a rural person. So I introduced the Jamaica chit chat session. And that okay. was when my journey started. Wow, boy, that's a really rich story. So uh, you, you're pioneers in so many ways, Diana. Um, what, yes. was, um, what, was, what was, you know, being a, a woman doing this kind of work? How was your, your training in the UK? How were you accepted as, you, now you're an immigrant, but an immigrant woman. How was that experience for you as far as people being supportive of you in that situation? Uh, it was very, it was very good, very positive. Uh, one thing I noted is that I dressed differently because I was always dressed very smart, whereas other students were in jeans and so on. And right. um, they, well, because that's what they're used to going to college with. Um, but I was always smartly dressed, and they used to say, "Why am I dressed that way?" But the lecturers enjoy that because they used to use me as an example of what hospitality people should be dressed as. <laughs> yeah. So I became quite prominent there and oh. and I was able to um, pave the way in a very profound way. And when I, re I returned to Jamaica, of course, you know, having gone on the North Coast and seen that there was nothing Jamaican there in the hotel, which was then the largest hotel in Jamaica. And I introduced that chit chat session. I became very prominent at 21 years old because I was in the news and everything. And people said that if they did not have that session, they would not have returned to Jamaica because I opened up the community to come to the hotel to be part of the chit chat session and had to do it every day. So that's, that's when my journey started to how tourism should be done with the community. Well, wow. so yes, yeah, so the, the idea of the chit chat session was you would um, arrange uh, the, the folks who are visiting to get the real Jamaican vibe and conversations and exchange with, with the guests. Is that the, yes, the model? We, we, we brought in the community people as a part of the chit chat session. So we had it as a rap session. Yes, okay. We, I, I, before when we when we talked last time, you know, you you had, you just had a passion for you looked at the value chain and the folks in the local communities that are not in the big hotels and the like, and enjoying that kind of season. That you went out and you did village more village based training. Um, you know that 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 experience. Talk a little about that experience. 
Well, the, the village experience you're talking about. Yeah. Um, the, the, why you got yeah, involved well, from the village? Beyond the chat, it seemed like you did some further innovation to now train folks in the vill at the village level to participate okay. in the in Valley Chain. Okay. That is when I returned to, uh, well, I was offered a German scholarship and okay. I went to Germany for two years and returned home. And when I came home, I decided that's it. I'm not going back into any tourism resort. I'm going to set up uh, a community approach. We didn't call it community tourism then. And Desmond Henry, who was then the director of tourism, I talked to him about it and he, he and I got together as partners and we branded it community tourism in 1978. Okay. And uh, from there, um, I emerged into the training. I decided to do the training at the hotel. Um, I, and we created a country style program, country style tourism. Mm -hmm. And we got um, a number of students who did not reach grade nine level um, trained in hospitality, basic hospitality skills and community tourism. And uh, they were from different communities, so they understood now how to approach um, visitors in their community. Um, and then after that, we moved forward and then we created uh, villages as businesses because people were not understanding, I'm speaking about our tourist board, etc., that we were not training people for tourism. We're training them for their lifestyle, to yes. improve their lifestyle. That, that shows the difference, yes. Thank you for that vision. Yes. We know, we, we know it's, it's going to be innovative people like you that's going to be needed. Over the last nearly two years, COVID has struck and has affected adversely the tourism um, sector of the Jamaican economy. Give us your perspective of how you see the COVID virus has affected um, the industry. Um, I have seen it, yes, but what I can tell you is that the COVID virus has helped me to improve my business because okay. um, community tourism is now worldwide and they have seen that that's the way forward when the re rebuilding process. And, the, you know, I've had over 30 awards now and um, yeah. that has also, also has helped. The last one was in last year when the World Tourism Network, which has just been formed, um, appointed me or selected me as one of the 17 persons for the Heroes Award for Tourism. And that was because of the Villagers Businesses Program. And the training that I have, the entrepreneurship training of five days, um, includes uh, training people in security as well as um, COVID protocol. And we now have it certified by University of West Indies Open Campus. So we just got U.S. Embassy has gave us some funding recently mm -hmm. to train 130 people island wide, um, virtually. Uh, we were able to only get 40 because it was difficult for them to get to the computer, you know, internet and so on. Right. But nevertheless, the ones the ones who got trained, oh my gosh, you should see how much they appreciated it. So wow. we're now marketing it worldwide because we have a demand even from the Maldives Islands. They have contacted us because they want to have a chapter of country style villages as businesses. And they've already branded their islands as islands as businesses and selected 16 of their 1,200 islands to participate with us. So we're working on that now. So it's very exciting. That's really exciting. So here we are going yeah. into the, 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 the next winter season. Um, what are some of the, how, how, tell us a little about the program and what are so, some of the features of it and how you think it's going to enhance this come, upcoming um, tourist season? Yeah, well, what is happening is that, you know, we have, we have had a, um, three years with Tui, the largest operator in the world, with one of our villages um, near Negril. Mm -hmm. And they were very excited that they came and filmed it, the experience where people go to a hairdressing salon first, and then from there they go to the uh, basic school and the prep school and then the church and then the community bar and the community restaurant. And they were amazed at how interested the guests were 
to experience us. I'm only mentioning that. So that's yeah. our model. And it has been um, good that we got the funding from the U.S. Embassy because why they gave it to us is that they wanted us to repair certain communities yes. to welcome visitors. And so we are continuing the process. And we know that now the larger hotels, the Sandals has been very supportive. We have like pick a project while on vacation, adopt a village. Um, mm -hmm. We have people who are interested um, from the large hotels in linking with us. Um, Island Roots and other people interested in linking with us with the tours because people do want that. They want to enjoy our culture and heritage, but they want to know that the guests are safe. Um, they're not going to get COVID <laughs> and that they will enjoy the experience. So I think the winter is going to be quite good for us. Gone, wonderful. Talk a little about the, 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 the COVID protocols that, that you have in place to, to give people assurance that Jamaica is a great place to, to vacation out this coming winter. Well, what is happening is that the Prime Minister and the government on a whole have been doing the emphasis on everybody being vaccinated. Okay. It's all over the country. Uh, they're doing a complete uh, movement. And we, we've just managed to get more vaccines, you know, different ones, not just one. Yes. Uh, so the country is being prepared for that. And the, the hotels have done that, you know, their um, staff etc. The Jamaica Hotel and Tourist Association has set up an ambassador program, community ambassador program, so that they can get the community's vaccination process move forward. So I think we're doing quite well with that. Wonderful. In some, in some sectors, you know, people are somewhat away, afraid of the vaccine, but I don't yes. sense that here. What, what's the sentiment of folks around the vaccine there? I can tell you that we've had a challenge with that because quite a few people have been afraid of the vaccine because of what they've heard or what they've read or what the, you know, how it is, the social media. Yes. But I think when the second round, you know, this other one that came in and yes. they saw so many people getting it and dying, not just getting it, but dying. Right. Everybody now has got the mindset they have to have the vaccine. So I think that just changed within the last month. Um, people who are against it are now doing it. But then you have a health and wellness section, like the Rastafarians, for example, they're not doing it because right. um, they have the herbal approach. Right. So, yeah. That's how it is. But I think we're on the way. I, I like it, and with with folks like you, innovative and taking and providing the leadership, I think we'll get there. Now, for the the yeah. program, I want us to to maybe share some more about the future of the program that you're doing. The, the yeah, as that other for other countries are so excited to adopt your your uh, innovation here. Yes, um, I am more than excited about that because, you know, before it was difficult for them because they'd have to pay for a flight, mm -hmm. um, accommodation and all that. No, they don't have to because we have it virtually. And uh, they are now trying to incorporate our villagers businesses program in the Caribbean region. I've, I've been doing that for years, um, training in Dominica, St. Lucia, um, Trinidad, Barbados, I'm just giving a few of the islands that I've been yeah. in, Grenada. I've been in most of the islands. I've been in the Dutch islands too, of St. Eustatius. And they've set up their working committees because the approach we use is that they have to set up a working um, committee in each community yes. to manage their community as a business. That's why it's called villages as businesses. Right. And then they have to um, see what they have as far as assets go and what the potential projects are. Um, and then once they do that, we do a business plan for that community with them. Mm -hmm. And then we market that business plan to potential investors, diaspora people. We're focused now the Dominican diaspora and the Caribbean diaspora. We have selected as being our main investment and marketing partners. 
And this is exciting because many of them are, you know, not getting ahead with um, government grants and what they would like to have. So they feel very positive about this because many of the diaspora people come from some of these communities. Right. And um, what is positive now, and this is for me the best part, where we have the training arm, the Academy, Academy for Community Tourism, we have the consultant arm, we have the business development arm, but we never had the funding arm. So now right. we have the funding arm, we've set up Comfund, which is now registered in the United States with our interim board from the diaspora. And uh, we are working on the, 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 who is the, which bank we're going to be utilizing for the investment, because the investment is going to be where um, the interest will be available for community projects and businesses, low interest loans and grant funding. And we're now setting up this month um, and in uh, a committee locally in the Caribbean for people to have their projects sent to. And I'm so pleased to tell you that the famous Dr. Knife in Jamaica, who is a, he's a very prominent lecturer at the University of the West Indies um, for entrepreneurship, you know, social entrepreneurship. He said he'll be the chairman for one year for us. So wow. all the projects will be sent. And my chairman for Country Style is a deputy uh, principal of the University of the West Indies, Professor Ian Boxill. So we, we, we are on a track which is up, up, up. And when we get that fund going, I'm telling you, every business and every tour and every vacation experience will have an amount in there towards comfort so that we would have money growing, growing all the time. So that, that, to get the way it's going to be funded, so it's going to be funded in two ways. One, that, that there's going to be like, is there going to be like a tax on the tourist dollars that coming in? And then the diaspora folks can also um, contribute their funds or yeah. into the into the diaspora fund that will be you. The interest will be used to to um, to be the re, to resource the, the uh, in the island um, projects. Is that did I get that yes, right? In, in, the, in the islands, projects in the islands. But what I wanted to tell you is that. We have not just a diaspora, we have visitors who want to do it anyway, because there's a lot of interest in that. Um, right. And we don't look at this as a tax, we look at this as a contribution. As a contribution. Um, Sandals okay. does it. Yes, Sandals does it very effectively with the Sandals Foundation. Um, okay. And they, they have done a lot of projects all over the Caribbean. Um, I feel good that I helped to pave the way um, forward with the Sandals being in that mindset, because Butch Stewart, um, always when he just started, I was involved, you know, in guiding the process. And I said to right. him, you need to care for the community, not just the hotel. And he went on the South Coast and told people that he thanked me for that. Because from then he moved forward and set up the Sandals Foundation. So we were able to inspire that Sandals in that way. And they've done a fantastic job. And as you know, he died. So his right. son is carrying on the legacy. Yeah. Wonderful. That's that's great. Yeah. So if, if folks hear this really great opportunity and they'd like to participate, is there a means for them to do that? Yes, yes, they, they can. Um, they just have to send us an uh, um, email. Uh, we have, you know, the villages at businesses at yahoo.com or you can to contest out tourism at yahoo.com. And the International Institute for Peace through Tourism has definitely endorsed our program as a project for peace. And I'm the Caribbean president. I'm, I'm, I was the first um, chapter outside of North America. And I continue being that over 30 years now. Well, congratulations for your sustaining leadership and innovation in, in this region. And I think it's, it's the kind of stuff that's going to make, you know, when folks the image, you've changed the image of what most people think of tours and they come for sand and surf and, and, and the folks, the value chain on the ground do not really participate in that, but most of the money gets sent abroad again. So uh, thank you for yeah, I, doing that kind of work. Yeah, I, I, just, I just wanted to mention one thing before you leave me, is that the IPT has endorsed Jamaica as the home of community tourism. 
and that is our marketing edge. But what we have done, because we're not selfish in that, we have embraced the Caribbean as the home of community tourism. We brought in the whole Caribbean as a part of our program. That's that's so interesting that you didn't just keep it to yourself, but now it's the rest of the Caribbean and other places you are allowing to use your model and train them in your model. That's right. And we we have a challenge because the CTO, the Caribbean Tourism Organization, they have set up the uh, Caribbean Caribbean Community Tourism Network um, as a platform for community tourism. We're happy about that. But the only problem we had is that they had the same acronym as us, CCTN. Right. So we had to get in touch with them and say, look, you can't use that. And they've agreed that they'll change this. I'm now waiting on what the change will be. Okay. But we're willing to collaborate, you know, with anyone who is doing community tourism. Exactly. So if you should put on your your future lens and look out, how do you see this affecting the growth and the sustainability of tourism in Jamaica? I think it's going to um, be very positive because um, we're focusing on entrepreneurship and yes. getting the people to work for themselves within their community. And what is also positive is that the people who are working in the hotels, they can be an entrepreneur, entrepreneur as well as being a hotel worker because they can set up their business, have family members and friends operated and not have all their eggs in one basket. Good. So I think it's going to be very, very positive for our country because we have very bright people in Jamaica, very talented people. I'm just sometimes so excited to see, especially young people, very talented, but they just need an opportunity to move forward. And that's what we are providing. Wonderful. Great. Well, we're about to close, Diana, and this has been such a rich and deep and inspiring conversation. Wondering if you have any final words for audience this evening? Well, the final word I'd say is that without the spiritual development of the people, uh, which is something that is very important for me, we cannot succeed because yeah. the, the challenges that we are, we are facing with the COVID, etc. if you don't know the good Lord, you are in trouble. And we have trained the people to think that way, and you know, we are, we are, as you know, in Jamaica, we have the most churches per square mile than yes. anywhere else in the world, right? So yeah. we have a good base, we have a good base, and what we want now is for people to understand that the church is not just a building. The church is when you go out, and you reach out, and you help the people, and help them, educate them how to move forward in that way and not confine them to saying that you're only a Christian when you go to church. That's something I'm very passionate about. Um, And we are hoping now that the diaspora will give us the support that we require. And I think the diaspora has the means to help us move forward. But they need to know that the projects that are identified um, are going to be accountable. That's another thing accountable for any yeah. project that the investment takes place. And we want to do a project study tour next year where people can come and see the projects anywhere it is, whether it be here or in the Caribbean. It is a very exciting thing to include projects in a vacation experience. So that I look forward to communicating with them on that basis. Boy. Well, thank you for the very comprehensive report. And the future is bright with this type of model. So thank you so much, Diana. And thank you very much for uh, having me on board. And I look forward to getting a recording of this so I can share it with my network. You certainly will. So to, le- so to learn more about Jamaican Diaspora, visit JamaicanDiaspora.com. To learn more about Chris Daly, visit Digital2, that's the number two, grow.com. And to reach Diana McIntyre. Give us your website and email, Diane. Okay, the website is visitcommunities.com slash Jamaica. And, uh, you know, if you want me, link with me directly to the slash Diana. And uh, we have villagesasbusinesses.com as well. And my number is 
716-707-6326, which is also my WhatsApp number. Diane, we really enjoyed spending time with you. Bye now. Bye now. Look forward to meeting you.